Well, once again, thank you for having me on the show. And and that, that meeting was very long, but it was I think it was necessary and I think it was very insightful. Uh, I think people share their concern, and rightfully so. We, January started off very tragically, a very violent month. Uh, we saw 23 shootings, uh, in which three people were killed. And considering we only had six homicides all of last year, then we're already 50% of that, that, that number just in the first month. Now, when we looked at the surge, initially we were trying to put it together, why so much violence, why so fast? And actually, there was a little bit of violence near the end of December, if you recall. And then we realized that I think what we have going on were three different groups were at conflict, for lack of a better phrase, and they weren't at conflict with each other. It was kind of intra-group. And so if you recall, near the end of December, <clears throat> early January, we had a, um, an incident where two young ladies, one Tong and one Samoan, uh, got into a verbal argument that escalated to a physical fight, and that escalated to two young men coming out, one with a handgun, one with a shotgun, and trying to and, and shooting at each other missed and actually killed one fe the, the 19 year old female and, and critically wounded the other female. So we know now here we have a, a homicide and a shooting tied into a verbal argument. Based on that incident, there were some allegations going back between the groups who's responsible, who started the fight, and there were at least four or five other shootings tied into that, mm. where they were targeting individuals, calling them responsible for it. We had at least two houses that were shot at with one person shot inside of a house. Uh, those same houses were, were where people tried to set them a fire. And so I, I think it stood out that you had this one fight that ended up with almost six shootings and one homicide. Mm. Shortly afterward, we got intelligence that we had two local gangs in the city that were, for some reason, battling or some, at some kind of odds. And we saw at least five shootings tied to that. And these were pretty violent shootings and that they used uh, assault rifles and fired numerous rounds. Uh, and then we had the double homicide on Schofield last week, about a week and a half ago, where we had a 13-year-old and a 17-year-old um, that were shot and killed inside of the carport at that location. Now, we believe that was gang-related, uh, as both were wearing gang colors, and we believe that this is tied into gang activity. Uh, we also are looking into the possibility that it's involved into a triple shooting, or a, actually three people being shot the day before in Redwood City. And so here you have these three powder kegs that were there. You had initial issue with the Pacific Islander community, possibly Tongan and Samoans. Uh, then you have the two gangs within the community, primarily African-American. And then the 13-year-old and 17-year-old were Latino, and possibly two gangs, uh, some kind of beef between those two, between Redwood City and East Palo Alto. Uh, any one of them is responsible for six or seven shootings, uh, and three of them together, then you get to the number 20, 22 shootings. Um, on a positive side, uh, as a result of that, we were able to, I think a lot of good effort has come out of it and to resolve and to quell the violence. If you, the Pacific Islander community stepped up um, immediately when we started to see the, 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 the trend and the faith leaders, the, the Tongan chief, the Samoan chief, uh, many of the family members were able to actually bring the families in conflict together and reconcile okay. and, and pretty much call a ceasefire. And we saw a quell on that level of violence and we see some sporadic things here and there, but that tension. And so it would be fair to say that the, both are very close, that this dispute potentially could have caused a divide, but I think the community uh, stepped in immediately, did a reconciliation, and prevented it from being any tension. And right now, I think both would tell you um, that they're close, have always been close, and that they consider themselves one Pacific Islander community, not mm -hmm. divided. With regard to the uh, two gangs, um, there has been a lot of community activity from various community-based organizations and faith leaders. And I, we know who the, the people are we think are feuding and bringing them to the table, uh, meeting with them, um, taking the lead, and, and, and once again, getting them to stop the violence and to call a ceasefire. And right now, our intelligence is, is suggesting that they that may have a positive step that may be working. Um, and with the, the two, with the double homicide, is we're starting to work with that right now in the Latino community to see if we can do similar efforts uh, where we can bring the, the conflicting parties together and look at using the community as the lead to really bring peace and, and reconcile those differences. Well, I'm really glad to hear that. That was very good to um, uh, be able to share that information with the community.